Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, the show all about music production and technology. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week we're going to carry on where we left off last week talking about my top six uses for the Ableton effects rack. Um, also, uh, this is your very last week to enter. If you wish to win the beautiful APC20, you can enter more than once if you want. Head down to the dspproject.com slash win for details of how you can enter. But without any further ado, let's get started. Number four is A-B testing. Now, this is particularly important if you're trying um, to do like uh, your own mastering or whatever. Obviously, it's best if you can get a mastering engineer, but that's not always uh, that's not always the case. So, the A, a being is is important because you can be tricked into thinking something sounds better because it's louder. So, as an example, uh, let's maybe come come to our uh, alchemy again, and this time I'm going to put um, put a compressor on here. I'll just uh, I'll just use live compressor again. Okay. So. Okay, we're not going to get such a, a dramatic effect with the compressor actually on the alchemy. Just thinking about it, because we haven't got a lot of dynamics. The gain is not really changing at all. So let's um. Let's put it on the drums, and we're going to use our imagination that this is actually a uh, a full mix. So we turn that off. Okay, so if we compare, um, okay, we've got the makeup game. Okay, so coming back to what I was saying, so I'm just trying to set this up, um, and I'm, I'm sort of going to extremes to try and illustrate a point. Um, again, with the, the mastering chain, you might set things up so, and generally speaking, if things are louder, they sound better. So you might set up, we, let's pretend this compressor is our entire mastering chain, and so you, you might try and um, sort of turn, them, turn the, 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 the mastering chain on and off to to compare the two versus the dry signal, right? So we have a listen. You might be thinking, yeah, that you know that compressed signal sounds better because it's a bit louder. You're going to hear um, because of the way your ears work, you don't have a flat response um, in the in the frequency response in your ears. So when things are louder, you hear a bit more bass, a bit more treble, and they sound nicer. So what we can do is push Command G again to create a group, and I'm going to and create a, another chain here. So again, this is we're working with a uh, a clean chain and your your mastering chain. But the um, the important thing about being able to A B here is um, having independent level control. So what I do is when I've got a mastering chain, I'll try and match the levels by ear so that the there's not a, a perceived volume increase. And so then you can really be uh, make some honest judgments about. Are you losing any detail in your mix, or does does it does it sound better, not just louder? Because if you're sacrificing any kind of uh, detail, or if it doesn't sound better without the increased volume, then you're you're doing damage, and, and you don't want to be doing that. So I'll um I'll have a listen. Okay, so actually another note here on uh, swapping between the two, we've got the these little um buttons here which work just the same as your little on off and off buttons here on your channel and I'm going to map these I'm going to map these out so I'm actually going to turn turn one on and leave one off and I'm going to select key here so this is the same as doing a MIDI map but I'm just mapping it to the keyboard because it's right in front of me so let's say uh, I'm going to map that to Z and that to Z and take key off so again you can do this exact same thing with a MIDI controller so now when I push uh, the Z key it should You'll notice that because I got keyboard on, it wasn't working. So now, if I push the Z key, it, I can switch between the two at, a, at the push of a button. So, having a listen. Okay, 
Okay, so now, um, now I can swap with a push of a button, and by matching the levels, I'm not getting a, a false impression of one signal being better because it's louder. Uh, and so, again, that can help you to make some more honest judgments um, because it's far more important that the audio sounds better than it sounds just louder. Um, so that's that sort of um, this sort of A B setup is uh, I use a lot for for when I'm uh, when I'm mastering. Another thing you can do is you can also set up um, to have a um, to A B in here and even have another track if you've got something if you're trying to uh, learn or, or get it to sound like a some uh, a different track then uh, it's good to use that that this little mapping trick of uh, being able to switch between the two on a single key. So that's A B. Okay, we get we're getting through these guys. Bear with me. Uh, next one is uh, quite a simple one, which is uh, for recovering CPU. So let's say I take uh, Alchemy here and I put something like the the amplitude, which I've been I've been trying out. Pop it on here. Um, it does, it does sound fantastic, but it does use a, a, a good amount of uh, CPU. So I'm just going to pick a preset at random uh, on the alchemy. Okay, so that sounds kind of cool. Now, uh, let's say I've got this uh, in my actual track, so I'm just going to record. And uh, I think, yeah, that's, that, that's what I want, but uh, I might have a couple of instances racking up and my, my CPU is going a bit, a bit too high. Obviously, this is a very clean, small set, so it's not using too much, but still 20%. Um, what I might do where I want to get the CPU back, but I also want to keep the... Um, Keep the the signal so I can come back and and edit or get something else out of it later. Um, what I'll do is I'll push Command D to duplicate, and I'll take uh, take one of the channels and I'll then freeze it. So that's going to render out like a like a WAV file, and then I'll, I'll flatten it. If you're not familiar with freeze and flatten, I recently did uh, another video on it, so uh, dspproject.com if you want to check that out as well. But uh, so I've still got this, however, I've still got this loaded in here, um, so it's still going to be taking up CPU. Uh, if you imagine this is a, a long effects chain, sometimes if you're doing sound design, making bass lines or whatever, you might have a bunch of plugins. So if you push Command A and select all, and then push Command G to put them all in a group. Um, by switching this group button off here, it turns all of the plugins off, and so you'll then uh, instantly recain that CPU. So if you see here, this is like 20% CPU running with the alchemy and the amplitude, uh, and then I hit the off button, and it drops down to 2%. So I've got uh, I've got all my CPU back, but yet I've still got this uh, unaltered channel, so I can go back in here and have a play with it later but I can use this nice rendered out, uh, this freeze and flatten file here for a use inside my track. So um, yeah, just get, gaining CPU back, but when you actually want to hold on to something, so you want, if you want to come back to it later and edit it. Okay, final, we're up to the final tip now guys, if you're still with me. The final tip is for using effects racks for multi-band um, processing. So what I mean by that is, let's say we'll turn this back on and uh, I'm going to stick a mouse button and push ungroup, pop these guys back out again. So here we've got the alchemy creating the baseline, the amplitude distorting it and then on the end here I've got a, um, a, little, a little meter lined up. I've found a better example here. So watching the, uh, the spectrum as I uh, engage, take this amplitude plug and turn it on and off. You'll notice that the, the and hopefully here, that the bass content and some of the highs are kind of lost. So.
So it makes this fantastic distortion, but uh, the cost of that is we're losing, as I said, some of the bass and some of the treble. So I'm going to select the amp amplitude plugin and push Command G uh, and pop out the chain and create three chains. So I'm just going to close this. We haven't got much room here. So this first one that's got the amplitude in it, I'm going to drop in an EQ8, and I'm going to create a high pass filter, and I'm going to set that at about, let's say, say 300, and then I'm going to create a low pass filter. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit to, yeah, about, say, uh, 6K. Oh, oh 6,000. Okay. So I'm turning these other chains off. So you, as you can hear, we're not really losing much because that those frequencies weren't coming out of amplitude anyway, um, so it hasn't really uh, ha hasn't really uh, affected too much. If anything, it sounds better, I think, without those those other frequencies getting in the way. So, but now we're going to jump to we're going to rename this and call this mid. This one here we're going to call low. I'm sure, some of you already onto what's happening here. Drop the EQ8 in, and I want to do a low pass. At about 300, and I'm going to solo this this channel. And so this is just the bass. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so about this. yay. And you know, if you wanted to, now you could kind of bump it, process it, do something different with it, comp you know, compress whatever um, to make that to make that part of the frequency do what you want. And finally, this one here, Command R to rename. I solo and uh, I just want to claw back some of the that high frequency content. So I'm not expecting to get much sound out of this at all. High pass at about 8k, 8,000, and that's that's fine. And so now if I take that off, oh, that's the mids so with the lows and highs this time. So as you can see, we're now getting uh, we're getting the gritty distortion sound, but we're we've also still got our bass coming through and our high frequency. So we've got the the best of all worlds. So there you have it. Hopefully now with the tutorials we've done in previous episodes and all these examples, you should have a pretty solid knowledge of what the effects rack is, what it does, and how you can use it. Of course, I haven't. I haven't uh, showed you every single thing that it can do. I mean, there's there's no doubt there's uses that that I don't even know about. So maybe if you've got some that we haven't uh, that we haven't covered here, head down to the DSPproject.com and uh, leave a leave a message under this video and let us know. That would be uh, that'd be really cool. And if you have uh, any questions, maybe something I haven't explained properly, you'd like to see a bit more detail on, then that's the place to leave a message as well. I would like to go into more detail on some of the techniques that I spoke about. I've tried to kind of just rush through them but for instance parallel compression and things like that it, I was just basically trying to show you how you'd use that tool to achieve it but I think we should go into a bit more detail and really um, really get into that one uh, a bit later on as I said at the beginning of the episode the, uh, next week we'll, we will be giving away the APC 20 as well as it's going to be the final episode of the year so I want to talk a little bit about uh, where we've come this year and what's going to happen next year um, and um, yeah talk about uh, DSP in the year 2011 also uh, I will be going for a holiday to New Zealand for uh, January basically all of January I'm, January I'm going to be away so you can unfortunately ex expect some disruption to the show so I'm going to call um, maybe this last episode, the end of the season, and we'll sort of do season two of the DSP project come 2011. But I'll go into more info about that next week. That is about all for the DSP project this week, though. If you want to get a hold of me, please send an email to inbox at the DSP project.com. It's really nice to hear from you guys. I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you next week.